Hey, and welcome back to Tell Samira. Thank you for joining me today. Today I'm going to talk about why you continue to get taken advantage of. So this right here, I believe is tight, but it's right. So just hang on. And I'd love for you to let me know some of the reasons why you think people have been taking advantage of you or why people in general just get taken advantage of. So this is not the all inclusive list. These are just some of the things that I've noticed uh, that play a big part of reasons why people get taken advantage of. So one thing is given too many chances. I've seen it over and over again. I have done this myself that I believe that I believe when people truly show you who they are to believe them. And I know this may be so cliche and I've said it before in my videos, but trust me, if people, if they're talking about you, they're always negative, they don't support you, you know, they complain about you, they criticize you, they continue to talk about things that you told them are off, that you don't want to talk about. They just totally show no regard for you any boundary you set up, meaning what's acceptable versus what's not acceptable, they just walk all over it. They don't care about you whatsoever. And they've shown you this time and time again, but you continue to want to give them chances for whatever reason. And like I've compared these, uh, even these toxic friendships to domestic violence, where there's this cycle of reasons why people take a long time to leave these toxic relationships is because whoever it is is this um, being negative towards you, sometimes they're nice, which is a total mind manipulation because you're like, you're thinking, oh, but well, this person has changed. They finally hear me. But then it always goes back to them being negative and just really treating you like crap. Then again, that circle happens again where then they're nice. It's like that honeymoon phase. Even if it's um just a friendship they may give you a gift or they may call you up or they may do something nice or they may know you're struggling with some money and they may give it to you so again you're like oh yeah they, I, they, I guess they've changed their ways and now i can see a better relationship no 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 that first time they show you who they are you can look and be like just okay take that in that second time now you have you're like okay this seems like it's going to a pattern that third time you, by that time you definitely need to confront that person and say look this is what you've done and if they're truly manipulative or a narcissistic person they're going to deny and try to put it back on you but now you have evidence and i've heard this from jordan peterson so i didn't create this myself so now uh you have ev evidence to say no look this time you said this you criticized my parenting you criticized the clothes i wear and i told you i like my style and you keep criticizing it and saying that other people are talking about me you just very negative about it you keep bringing it up it's all you can talk about uh you always uh, focusing on my flaws so yeah these times here so it's definitely what's happening and then you set that um limit with them saying look I, I'm done. You can either choose to be done at that point or say, look, if this happens again, I'm out of here. And then you got to stick to it. That's part of breaking that habit and giving people too many chances. Then you can't just tell somebody I'm out and then it happens again and then you stay. You know, that's just like a kid. You tell them stuff over and over and make them threats and then they see, oh, I don't have to trust what my parents or anybody in authority say because this person's word is not their bond. They say they're going to do this, they're going to do that, but they never follow through. It's enough talk talking about what you're going to do. It's time to show people what you're going to do. Don't give them the heads, I'll keep giving them the heads up. Hey, if you keep doing this, hey, if you keep doing this, no, people are not deaf and, uh, and they probably don't have an intellectual disability, meaning that they have enough cognitive sense. They can, their mind is working and they can hear you and understand that what they are doing to you is wrong. You don't have to keep telling people over and over again. They are not impaired mentally. Okay. So also another reason why um, some people keep getting taken advantage of is because they feel that they have a history with their abuser, meaning that it could be a friendship, it can be romantic, whatever. And they're like, well, you know, I've known this person for um, so many years and I just don't want to end that relationship. But my question to you, are you happy in this relationship? How do you feel after dealing with this person? Do you feel drained? Are you dealing with an energy vampire that comes around and sucks all the energy out of you, talks to you on hours and hours about their problem? And as soon as you 
you try to tell them about the, your problem, they need to get off the phone or they need to go home or, or all of a sudden they want to social distance at that point if you're all face to face because now you all want to talk. But they weren't scared of Corona when they were telling you about their burdens and unleashing all their mess off onto you. You know, so some people think that and it's because I think of a lack of love. Like, oh, I've been friends with this person for 20 years. So even though they treat me like crap and walk all over me and just totally treat everything that I think is great as if it's nothing, as if something is just wrong with me as a human being that, oh, I know them this long and I have to keep putting up with it. No, love yourself. You don't have to keep putting up with that stuff. And some people even feel like, well, I've been, you know, I've been a doormat for X amount of years. So now I can't change it up because everybody just knows me as the person who's always going to say yes yeah, or the person that's always going to be, you know, just bending over backwards. So no, you don't have to stay in those roles. You can recreate yourself at any point you want. You can start loving yourself enough, start standing up for yourself and setting those boundaries saying what I will allow versus what I won't allow. And then sticking to those boundaries saying if this is broken, this is what I'm going to do and be prepared to follow through it's not enough just to have um, a set of guidelines of what's acceptable but you got to be able to follow through on that another reason that people uh, stay in these toxic relationships and just allow themselves to be manipulated is because they are too naive and I got this from Jordan Peterson too, a uh, Canadian based uh, psychologist uh, he talks about that people are naive meaning they don't have a concept of evil and I know in this society, when you talk about evil, people are like, oh my God, nobody's evil. Nothing is good and bad. Everything is relative. You know, you may believe that, but I don't. And I don't apologize for that. I do believe in evil because I've experienced it before. So some people, you may have been blessed not to have to experience people who wish for your downfall, who are actively plotting and planning against you, people who you thought were going to love you and then they purposely tried to destroy you or wanted to question your mental stability and want to drive you crazy. And they actually feel that they, they, they get a uh, kick if they can see you uh, be destroyed and be locked up in some loony being like that. But, you know, but it happens because you don't understand that there are wicked people out there like this. And, you know, I've had even clients, um, as a therapist, I've had clients tell me, oh, I don't want to judge anybody. I can't say that person's evil or um, I can't say that person is bad or I can't say that person is really out to get me. I really can't say anything at all about that person. And not that I tell my clients, I don't really talk about them about evil. I phrase it a different way and just ask them a lot of questions so they can come to their own understanding of what's going on in their lives. But anyway, it's like they're like, I don't want to judge anyone. And I'm like, okay, but X, Y, and Z happened and they can, they're they stealing money from you. Uh, they're questioning your parenting. They're calling you a bad parenting parent. They say you're never doing anything right. They hit you. They, they um, you know, bust out the window in your cars and you still don't feel that you have a right to say that this behavior is unacceptable and you don't want to deal with it. And they're like, no, I just don't want to judge anyone. Could it be that those people are so naive that this fear of judging is is making them susceptible to this constant abuse. It's like, I think like this, if you continue to find yourself in a negative, bad situation, that in order to get out of it, you need to go back and look at all those situations that led you up to where you are now and to totally analyze it to see what happened, where did I, where was I blind, and what could I do differently so I don't continue to find myself in these bad situations because when you continue to find yourself in these toxic situations over and over and over again, one time, okay, maybe it's not you. The second time, uh, I'm going to start looking like, what is it in me that keeps putting me in this relate this type of relationship? Like someone commented on one of my videos, you know, we get in these relationships because it's to learn a lesson. And, some, and, I, and thank you for that. And that's so true. Sometimes the lesson is you need to boss up. You need to get your tough on and get your strength on and stop being a person that's being walked on and, and then learn to love yourself and say, no, I'm not allowing you to just continue to do crazy to me. I'm going to step up. I'm going to see that what you're doing is evil. I'm, or if you don't like to term evil, whatever it is that helps you, 
You know, we eye to eye. Don't get caught up on the word evil. Replace it with the word that you can deal with. Bad, unpleasant, uncomfortable, whatever it is. To say, look, this is happening and I'm going to judge it to say it don't work for me. Because truthfully, we all judge. I mean, everybody's in this society now where, oh, it's not safe to judge. You should be able to judge what is right, what is wrong for your life. If it impacts you, you should definitely judge if it's acceptable versus if it's not acceptable. Because if you don't judge, people are going to do any and everything to you. Because I like someone once told me, and I think this is the thing, the right statement, if you find a fool, bump bump his head meaning that these manipulative people they think that if you're naive and you're gullible and you're a yes person that they're going to manipulate you and take full advantage of you because they see you as weak and they also see it as a lesson that you need to learn and they're going to continue to do it because they feel like look I found a fool so I'm going to bump their head because this person's stupid and they're going to let me do it so stop allowing yourself to be naive and being taken advantage of lastly the reason people um, continue to stay in these relationships where they're getting taken advantage of is because of fear. I think some people, they have they, they were abandoned maybe as children. Even And, and abandoned could be, you could even have a, um, a parent who was addicted to substance abuse who was still in the home, but they may be neglected, taking care of your needs emotionally, or maybe they didn't provide you with adequate food or water or shelter. You all were house um were surfing different couches of whoever would feel sorry for you and your parents at that time, you know, or just actually your parent could have actually left you or just been very cruel to you and uh, criticized you, um, who you were as a person, your personality, how you look like, how you look, just making you feel not good enough. And I think when people come from those type of backgrounds, they have a fear of being abandoned because they're still trying to work out that relationship with mom and dad of trying to be loved and being accepted. And they don't realize that they're doing any and everything to be loved and accepted, even being abused. And they're really not getting, you know, they, they really don't get that full love that they need, but they accept whatever crumbs of love is thrown at them because they, they don't want to feel that rejection again because they've been feeling it their whole life lives so they will hold on for dear life and beg the abusers and manipulative friends and people to stay around and they'll put up with that kind of stuff just because they don't want to be rejected they don't want to be lonely like oh well this person treats me like crap but at least i don't have to go to dinner by myself oh this person slapped me in the face and kicked me in the mouth but at least i can say i have someone you know we do all these kind of things because we're trying to still fix what happened in childhood but we don't understand that we're still in this vicious cycle of um crazy making behavior and we've just totally not healed also, that fear can be fear of retaliation, meaning fear that someone will strike out and hit you, fear, uh, you you know, that you won't be liked. All these kind of things can, it can make people stay in these abusive relationships. And the thing is, is we have to deal with the core of that issue, you know, with um, trying to figure out what about us makes us stay in a rela these relationships. A lot of times when we first discover about toxic people and narcissism, we do all this research, which is natural. I've done it myself. And we learn about this and we get to the point where we're just constantly pointing the finger. This one's a narcissist. That's a narcissist. This is a psychopath. That's an antisocial person. This person is toxic. This one is this. This one is this. But the thing is, if you keep finding all these people in your life, this is not a coincidence incidents you are the common denominator so what about you is open for all of this what again what lessons do you have to learn you can do all the research you want about other people and I'm talking to myself too but if you don't heal and understand why you are in this predicament over and over again you're just going to continue to have the same cycle of all these relationships and you're going to be pointing the finger pointing the finger but as a pastor once told me with all the fingers you point you still got one pointing back at you so i can point this way but i still got these two thumbs pointing at me so you have to deal with you within which is why it makes it hard when people ask me questions of what they should do it's like i don't like to really go into to that a lot online because 
sometimes people are so damaged once you start telling them the truth of what's going on in a relationship oh you know they start to get defensive and then they start um justifying the behavior well i've known this person for so long so i just can't leave them or this is my friend if this is your friend why are they treating you like crap and why are you leaving a comment under my video apparently it's not your friend you wouldn't have been led to me if it was. So that's the thing. And I totally agree that you may need therapy. You may need some type of religious counseling, spiritual counseling to help you to deal with your wound. Because when that is dealt with, you won't continue to find yourself in these relationships. That narcissist and toxic person may come past, come, come past you into your life. And then you'll do just like what other healthy people do. Say, mm, I see what that behavior is. I saw it once, I saw it twice, now I'm out the door and I'm not dealing with this because I've seen this in the past and I know what to expect. Eventually, you got to see, recognize the game when it's all in your face and love yourself enough to say, I've been down this road, I see this, I see that behavior, no boo-boo, I'm out. So, thank you for watching this video. Please like, please subscribe if you want to see more content. Also, um, if you do want private consultation, look down in the description, description section and you'll see how you can schedule an appoint, a private appointment with me through Venmo and all payments will go through Venmo only. Thank you.